Oh, let's see. Maybe I'll do another live update. I plan on posting the regular uh, videos I've been doing, like the Hurricane Harvey, uh, on Facebook. <coughs> but I sometimes I'll think of uh, this is my secret location. I'll think of like funny stories. Okay, I was on the streets a few weeks ago. This is for the Nick Jimenez's and all these people that like, you know, La Raza and all. And, but they have never, you know, strayed from the security of there. So the guys, some of the guys were kind of drunk. And every now and then, you know, they'll, you know, get into it with each other. And I... And I'm just sitting there, and it was kind of nice, and I mean, I was just enjoying being out with the guys, but they were getting loud, and some, so in the middle of it, I stopped, and I raised my hands. I said, these are lethal weapons, like, and they kind of were surprised, oh, is John going to flip? I said, these are lethal weapons, I said, especially when I had my 38 Special in them. And then Albert laughed, because they were thinking, John's going to flip. He said, oh, like if I had a zoo, a zoo, uh, what is it, an Uzi. So I kind of broke the ice. But you know, as a joke, you know. And uh, But one time, and this is actually the friend that told me about the sale of methamphetamine to a sitting Hispanic judge, who today is on the bench and also was called out by other bloggers by name. And that particular blogger did, I edited his links, I think they've killed that guy. But he, he kind of was, he was an intelligent man, he laid out various cases uh, of corruption in South Texas. But um, that, that was the friend that they like surprised, how can they do that, John? Like, and that's why, they're enabled, they're empowered because of the inability of the local media when they target white judges, but if it's in a Hispanic judge, they give them protection and cover. And they even write articles praising them. That's what makes me mad. That's what makes me mad. That's why you see racism. But sure enough, there was a guy from the street that's in not the white affiliated groups, but the Mexican ones. But he came up to me and I was with that other friend, the one that had told me about the sale to the judge. This is, I don't know, four years ago. <laughs> Just out of the blue, he came up to me and said, would you say about my mother? Like, and some, look, there's one of my friends, you know, got stabbed in front of that mission a few years ago. And, you know, out of the blue. And I told my other friend, I looked at him, I said, does this guy know that I had killed six people in New York City many years ago? And I'm on the run. That's why I'm here in tech. Now... I was kidding, but the other guy, I guess he, uh, you know, that was it, he didn't say nothing else, and of course that was as a joke, but I guess maybe it had an effect on the other guy, I helped them all at that period of time, and I'd get friends that might be in the other groups, so all my friends, you know, I'm not ever speaking down to the people I'm trying to help. But to know that leadership in the community, judges and high people in official positions also have connections with those groups and that, that's a disgrace to me. That's a disgrace to me. So that'll That'll be uh, the last kind of little one for today. I have some teaching. There's, I read Isaiah, I forget if it's 31 or 32, 
whatever last chapter I read uh, last night, but there was one verse that stuck with me, and it said, as a lion is devouring its prey and tearing it up, it says, when the voice of many shepherds start yelling, coming into the defense for the sheep that the lion has gotten, it says that lion could care less about all of the voices of the shepherds that are screaming. Now in this passage, I'll try, maybe I'll link it, I'm going to link these to tomorrow's teaching post, the one that I made earlier and this one. But that, in that passage, the lion, if you read the end of that verse, it's speaking about God. And the shepherds are like voices in the community that are really not from God. And they're basically saying, stop, we're going to get you. And even though there's a lot of shepherds yelling at that lion, it's, and Isaiah is saying, he's prophesying, he says, he could care less. That lion at that moment could care less. And then the end of that verse says, and that's how God is among his people. Meaning when, when God comes in, and the voice of the Lord is speaking, all of the little crap that uh, you see in society, it's like, go ahead. What are you going to do? The, the testimony of the Lord stands sure. The word of the Lord that's gone forth, that's gone forth. You and I, we're like the grass. You'll be dead. I'll be dead. We're all going to be dead. Why are you consuming all your time and worried about protecting yourself? You're going to, that's one thing I can guarantee. We're all going to be dead. Some soon, some later. But the word of the Lord, would, would you have communicated and spoken throughout your life in righteousness? That'll last. And all of the shepherds in that particular verse, all of the other things, yelling, screaming at the lion, shut up, let's stop. Stay. Some of you in this community, you have left a legacy that you've had opportunities maybe that others did not have in this part of South Texas. Some of you rose the ranks and you've left a legacy to your family name. Some of these that I'm speaking about do have uh, certain things that were praised in the community. They did it, the call of times did those things. And then this other sort of like, there's, a, there's like a bravado. You know, we were talking the other day about the mafia and all, I forget, somebody brought it up again recently. Of course, there's that whole thing of the image. And to know that figures in this community, somehow they have grasped hold of a view that they're going to kind of defend that particular amount of corruption that really the, the people know about. The, the inner Kabul group of people within this community see them, you know, and then they, and I'm sure some of them go to church, some pop probably to the cathedral church when I go, so listen, so we'll, we'll give you that one, we'll end with that one, I'm not sure what I'll title this, but yeah, we, we put out a permanent record, the colder time says, yet, today, let it be known that they also will refuse to release the history of sexual harassment complaints that they themselves, as the Corporation of the Polar Times, have settled throughout the years. Now I know there are some, so let it be known that they have refused today to release that. Whether any who are presently sitting employees of their company 
whether some of them actually have had subtle suits. The mainstream media I mentioned on the first video, Chris Matthews, is now also come under fire. And so even the media entities in this day, as well as politicians and everybody else, even they have now been called to account. But yet the local media thinks, oh no, we're not going to be, we're not going to uh, be open and honest like even the national media are having to do. The Tavis Smiley, PBS, uh, dropping his show. He went on a couple of uh, media outlets, some that were conservative. Fox News, I think Tucker Paulson had him on. He kind of gave defense for himself. So you have even the national media willing and, oh, and uh, reprimanding their own employees, but the call of times won't answer. So let this be the other one. And if you think I was kidding when I said it's possible that that editorial board actually uh, committed the crime of obstruction of justice, that wasn't a joke. You could look at that. I understand that the odds are low because of media figures and all. But I, be I believe a case could be made. Unless they finally would be honest with Corpus Christi and write a retraction and say, well, as we thought about it, it probably wasn't right for us to defend a rogue city employee that would indeed maybe just block a road without proper authority, and the road would affect many, many people. Maybe it's, even if we felt the road should be blocked, which Calder Times obviously feels that, maybe we shouldn't have advocated that it was a good thing and that a rogue employee, whether it's a cop, a firefighter, a, a rogue employee should never bypass the procedures within the city government and on his own decide, I'm going to just block a road. Because that's what they defended. That's what they told every national or international business that might want to relocate. They told them, well, you know, your road to your business might be blocked. No vote. No approval of the mayor or the council, because this is how it's run in the cobble of South Texas. So maybe they would, you know, they're not going to release the, you, know, you might have people sitting at the call of times now with multiple sexual harassment settlements, they're not going to release it. It's been put forth on a public forum. They've not gotten in contact with me. They're basically telling you, the community, no. We demand Blake Farron Paul, and I called for his resignation. Now they're going on and on about it. We demand Whitey. Whitey come down. Remember that, you locate to this region. And if you're white, <laughs> the way it works down here, white judge or judges, there's a degree of investigation on you, Mr. Guy Williams and others, but yet when, you, when the tables are turned, the local cobble will do all they do to, to protect illegal activity within the court system, within the judges, and because of those types of connections, if somebody even brought to the attention, it, it's possible that they'll have that person killed. So that's your South Texas for you. Polar Times refuses to answer to the public.